Good evening, you're watching The Digital Age, and I'm James Goodale. Hillary Clinton announced her campaign on the net, almost the first person to do that. A lot of people think she's not electable, but will the net make her electable? That's the question we are going to decide tonight, or decide, discuss tonight with Hank Scheinkopf, Scheinkopf Communications. Yes. Ed Rollins. Mm -hmm. How are you? Who was the political director of the Reagan White House. Welcome. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank now, you. I want to talk about Hillary's personality and the fact that uh, she may not be electable. And I want to ask you this without giving us your view. Just tell us from a consultant's point of view why people say about Hillary, one, she's like sand on glass. Well, she's a polarizing figure, and, and, and I think, uh, you know, she's not as charming as her husband. Although she's very articulate, she's bright, but she, she is just not a warm and fuzzy candidate and I think at the end of the day uh, uh, it's one of these things where there's not an emotional attachment there may be an intellectual attachment but it's it's not that emotional attachment. Do you think she's too scolding? Well I, I, you know I think I think she's going through an evolution and I think we'll have to see what kind of what, right, where well, she comes out. Actually we're going to see the evolution on the camera in a sec. Right. You want to respond to that before we look at the first video? I think it's poppycock. The whole thing the program is uh, poppycock. No probably. you're not poppycock you're a nice fella and you're doing good <laughs> things but look it's nonsense that she can't be elected, that she's too tough, she's too this, she's too that. Here are some facts. Well, why don't we stop for the facts? Why don't we just take a look at Hillary? Excuse sure. me. You have plenty of time to do this. But why don't we take a look at uh, Hillary off net? That's, that used to be mainstream media. Can we run the first video, please? Suppose you were meeting today to decide who got the vouchers. First parent who comes says, I want to send my daughter to St. Peter's Roman Catholic school and you say great wonderful school here's your voucher next parent who comes says I want to send you know my child to the Jewish day school great here's your voucher next parent who comes says I want to send my child to the private school that I've always dreamed of sending my child to fine here's your voucher next parent who comes says I want to send my child to the school of the church of the white supremacist you say wait a minute you can't send now, we're not giving you a voucher for that and the parent says, well, the way I read Genesis, Cain was marked. Therefore, I believe in white supremacy. And therefore, you gave it to a Catholic parent, you gave it to a Jewish parent, you gave it to a secular private school parent. Under the Constitution, you can't discriminate against me. Suppose the next parent comes and says, I want to send my child to the school of the, the jihad. Wait a minute, we're not going to send a child with taxpayer dollars to the school of the jihad. Well, you gave it to the Catholics, you gave it to the Jews, you gave it to the private secular people. You're going to tell me I can't? I'm a taxpayer under the Constitution. Now, tell me how we're going to make those choices. Warm and fuzzy? No, it was not warm and fuzzy. Uh, but, you, you know, it, it's, it's not... Uh, she articulates well uh, her points of view, um, and, and I didn't say she can't win. I think she can win. I think the bottom line is there. She has been a polarizing figure, and what well, she why is she why is she polarizing? Because it, she has a history. She, first of all, she wouldn't be where she is as a front runner of the Democratic Party if she hadn't been the first lady, and she wouldn't be the senator if she hadn't been the first lady. So during that long tenure, there was some polarization that built up. Uh, she has a period of time now in which she can be herself, and I think to a certain extent, uh, as time goes on, people will get to see her in a different light. But that doesn't mean that there's still not going to be some animosity towards her. Okay, we're going to look at her in a different light uh, when she's on the net. But Hank, uh, putting aside, uh, again, beliefs, but just looking at it as a consultant, uh, what's your view? My view is that people want substance. Uh, they don't want tenseness, but they want substance. Did she think it was tense then? Um, the argument against her is that she's very direct, she's kind of scolding, she's too much to the point. Well, in fact, Americans are looking for that. I mean, that's pretty clear. If you look at who got elected to Congress and who got elected to the Senate, we don't have people who are so, like Ronald Reagan. We have different kinds of people, and particularly in an age where television, except for the news cycle, is becoming much less relevant. The web is becoming more relevant. Direct mail is becoming less relevant. The idiocy that somehow you can elect somebody by making a last-minute phone call into their home is just ridiculous. That's not working. People are looking for substantive comments. That's why you have the growth of blogs. Okay, They're well, looking for an interchange. All right. Uh, I'm cutting you off just so I want to get the, sure. this other thing out, and then we'll, we'll get back to your points. Uh, you said the web is relevant. Hillary chose it as a place to announce her presence. She actually was the first. Obama said he was considering it, so he was ahead of her. 
using the net for a public announcement. She's the first. And uh, here she is on the net. So let's take a look and see if there's any difference between what we saw and what we're seeing now. I announced today that I'm forming a presidential exploratory committee. I'm not just starting a campaign, though. I'm beginning a conversation with you, with America, because we all need to be part of the discussion if we're all going to be part of the solution. And all of us have to be part of the solution. Let's talk about how to bring the right end to the war in Iraq and to restore respect for America around the world. How to make us energy independent and free of foreign oil. How to end the deficits that threaten Social Security and Medicare. And let's definitely talk about how every American can have quality, affordable health care. All right, is that the same Hillary as we saw first no, time around? But, but that's no different. I mean, the fact that it's on the net is no different than something Hank or I would produce for a TV commercial, uh, a, a five-minute introductory commercial or a bio commercial. It's, 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 I mean, the net today is another vehicle to basically put your, put your message out there, and a very important one. Uh, and one in which people will pay attention. People won't pay attention to that on television today, but they, but people who are in the internet who have an interest in her will pay attention to it. It's a very well produced uh, spot. We're very well done, very to the point. But the web, the difference here is the use of web, is a controllable medium where you can do what you want without interaction. Where you can announce what you will for any length of time. You're not you're not circumscribed to a 30 or a 60 second format. You do what you want. She comes across. Nicely, calmly, quietly, and directly, which goes to my point before. Well, now, uh, you, you said two different things here, because you made a very good point when we first came. Well, all your points are good. Uh, Thank with you. respect to uh, the public wants a direct candidate, okay? And that was the compliments to her on the first video when she was being very direct. Uh, here she comes across uh, a let it, uh, less direct and more humane, and, and her personality, as you say, is controllable. Mm -hmm. Now. How do you control her personality on, uh, let's think how you would do that on the net. First of all, um, the um, graphics on her face struck me as being quite different than what you see in person. So you can do that every time on the net, right? Sure, but again, look, all commercials are, to some, are a function of two things, script and art direction. What do I mean by art direction? What is the setting? She is in a couch, in a room with a lamp off. It's a pleasant environment. The lighting is right. It's a TV ad, but it's a TV ad in a very circumscribed kind of setting. Therefore, you can do what you want. You control the place. And the web, my view, the web is much more controllable than broadcast television ever was in many ways because you can do more. You have more options. What are some of the, I couldn't agree more, by the way, but I, I'm looking for you for advice on this. What do you think about that? Is it more controllable? Is it, does it change your life well, as a consultant? Well, sure it's more. Changes your life well, as more, a consultant? It's more controllable for this reason. The people that, that go to... HillaryClinton.com to see this are people who want to get her message, uh, and so they're going to pay attention to it. Where in a broadcast, uh, you're basically out there competing with everybody, and someone's flicking through the channel, and they may see it, may quickly move on, and they may get half of it. Where here, people sit down, they focus, they pay attention, uh, they respond to it negatively or positively, and, and obviously it's a much better form to do it. And the other part of it, it's inexpensive. It's a, the audience is growing daily, and I think it's, uh, it's clearly very much a part of the future, and anybody who doesn't play with it uh, uh, does so at their own peril. Now, in terms of the uh, controlling it as an ad, sure. uh, that's not much different than, than uh, political advertising. But how about the use of the net just as a, a place to chat and talk with people? How, what do you think of that as a... I think it's very important. I mean, if you're angry at someone, one of the best ways to deal with your problem in a, in a, in a political sense is to create a town meeting where they can yell at you, and then everybody says, gee, I yelled at them, I feel so much better, and now I can go home. Blogging does the same thing. Okay, blogging will, is a, will, for people to vent emotion, to feel they're getting something accomplished in a community of others they can relate to, and to come up with a conclusion. That's very important. But there's something else going on here. If television is the medium, or has been to date, with which we get, I think there was a study by two political scientists in the early, like 80, Patterson was one of them, said 81% of Americans or thereabouts get their political information from television. What's changing is they're not getting their information from television as we describe it. The Daily Show is not the television that those political scientists surveyed. More people are getting more information from The Daily Show than they may be getting from most cable news broadcasting, which tells you something off the top. There's a definitive change in the environment, and the web is fitting that change. How would you, how would you use the web particularly for Hillary, if you were Hillary's consultant? I mean, we've seen, we've seen you have her, I take it, announce her presence on, on the web. Would you do that? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, do it in, I do it in multiple forms, and I would every day, uh, or, or at least several times a week, 
you know, you build your you build your list like your donor base. You build your your people who are interested, and you send them uh, emails, and you basically put put a video stream on it, and you keep them informed, and you make them feel a part of the campaign. The problem today with politics, unlike when Hank and I started, is nobody can feel a part of the game anymore. There are no precincts to go work in. Uh, there are no local party organizations, and no Tammany Hall or. Uh, even even uh, local Democrat or Republican clubs, uh, and so people now can feel a part by connecting to the internet. The other thing that this that this does that I think is 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 very very important, and and I and I think what blogging is doing, it's almost back to the to the turn of the century when there are hundreds of newspapers, uh, and you had very biased reporting, but there was there was a lot of coverage. Uh, in the last decade or two, we have gone to the point where it's CBS, NBC, New York Times, Washington Post, uh, and, and, and they were the ones who were the ultimate authorities. Today, you don't need that. Today, you basically find someone you trust. Uh, the Libby trial is a perfect example. There's coverage going on in the Libby trial every day, which you can probably get more facts and figures out of that than you can the very small coverage that may be going on in the New York Times or the Washington Post. And I think to a certain extent, there's more information, not less, and I think I think bloggers and people who are interested in the internet and the net uh, want more information, not less information. How do you? How do you uh, I think that's right, by the way. Yeah. I mean, how do you deal with bloggers as a campaign consultant? Very difficult because I don't think that there's I don't think there's enough uh, experiential data on which to make a decision. You can look at blogs as being negative. You can look at them as being positive. Where I, uh, Joe Lieberman, I would look at them as being very negative because they help take him out. But what the blogs do, and this is important, if you presume that. The real, the real question about democracy is mobilizing people to go out and vote. That is the most important thing we do in a democracy, that we're having problem mobilizing them because the means we communicate with them to, to give information aren't working, i.e. television, direct mail, phone calls, whatever it is, that local fraternal organizations and local organizations are dying, then what is the substitute for all that? So the good news for democracy is that the web may ultimately be that savior. The bad news is it may not be. <laughs> different, <laughs> different problem. All right, but if the, if the web is the savior, and uh, you're, you're now able to control your image much better on, on the net. Well, you can and you can't. There's, there's a very well, let me just okay, do the positive sure, okay. part, okay, and I'll, I'll come to the sure. next. But I want to show you guys a YouTube, which picks up the you can't point. Yeah. But the, the you can part, in Hillary's case, um, do you think the net, by and large, helps her and makes her more electable? I think she's electable. At the end of the day, she's going to get elected the old-fashioned way. She's going to have more money, more television, more resources, and more voters. I think the blogs will basically add a dimension to her campaign, and she'll probably be out on the cutting edge. But that's she's not going to basically junk her television commercials or her mail or her operatives or any of the rest of it. She's still going to run a conventional campaign. Now, you said that uh, at the beginning that uh, as people got to know her, she'd be less direct, she'd, she'd soften up a little bit. Do you think that uh, her ability to use the net would help in that regard? I think it helps tremendously. It does. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah. She's reaching a population that needs to be reached and, and relating to them in a way that is very important. And by doing so, she immediately implodes all the negative things that have been said about her by a, by a particular group of people. Frankly, if the stuff that has been said about her and all the criticisms that you frankly raised in a reasonable context at the beginning of this program are accurate then why did white men in large so large numbers vote for her in the previous general election that just occurred in New York State number one number two the guy running against her at seven million bucks he said all the same things that have been said for years not a, one of those items stuck uh, you know uh, this tells you something and the net by the way in this case use of the web further softens that and makes it more 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 even more believable all right now let's Let's t see how turn that around and see how it can be used against you. Let's run the uh, last video. This is a, this is a YouTube. You, this is a YouTube of her announcement for presidency. I announced today that I'm forming a presidential exploratory committee. I'm not just starting a campaign, though. I'm beginning a conversation with you, with America, because we all need to be part of the discussion if we're all going to be part of the solution. And all of us have to be part of the solution. Let's talk about how to bring the right end to the war in Iraq and to restore respect for America around the world. How to make us energy independent and free of foreign oil. How to end the deficits that threaten Social Security and Medicare. And let's definitely talk about how every American can have quality, affordable health care. All right, so that raises a couple of questions. Uh, one, uh, she got too much baggage, which we'll talk about in a second, but more to the point. Uh, is the net going to be used against her? Oh, sure. Uh, you know, the bottom, the bottom line, when Hank and I started in this business, and I started before he did because I'm older, uh, 
you used to have about a day to respond to a negative attack. You, or you, you, even if you got it in the morning, you had to at least be ready by network television. Uh, and then in the, in the last 10 years with cable television, you had to be ready in an hour or two hours. Now you could be ready in five minutes. You could have someone every day monitoring this stuff uh, and be prepared. An attack that's made on that medium, you have to respond in that medium. Uh, you know, this is humorous, and I don't think I wouldn't necessarily respond to this or pay a whole lot of attention to it. But that doesn't mean something can't move and go across the net, and which millions of people have got moved it across blogs. Uh, the Anna Nicole Smith stuff is a perfect example of the garbage that's been moved this last week. Uh, the millions, millions of, of uh, uh, and, and so I, I, there's a real danger to it. And, and you've got to really monitor, you've got to have young people that really understand this business. What do you do? What do you do with YouTube? What do I do? Yeah. Look. Um, there was an argument being made that the media consultants of the future will be the web and blog masters of today in our business. So That's we'll very simple, and that you're going to have to have the same skill uh, that a guy like me has who can put spots together, put ads together, doing the internet work. Now, do I think that that particular response to her was very good? Graphics were terrible, and part of what's happened in television production generally is that political producers are under the same constraints as people who. Do, who do MTV are. They've got to have moving graphics that work. So that wasn't too good. Um, do I think that you've got to respond to every charge? Generally, you do. But you've got to do it in a way so that the response to the charge does not create more news. Mm -hmm. Different issue. Right. But how are you going to do... Uh, well, let's say you were doing this coming campaign for Hillary, okay? Um, how would you allocate your resources? I mean, here we are, we're sitting, uh, all three of us, with the experience of campaigns of uh, old-fashioned media, in a sense. Well, not necessarily. But well, that's, that's that's my question. I mean, how much, how much, how would you divide your resources between old and new media? Well, let's step back a second. Yeah. I think you have to define first of all the primary campaigns versus the general election. The primary campaigns are going to be less media, de less paid media dependent because you don't have enough time to do it. Okay. The idea that somehow the news cycle is not as important as people think is absolutely patently wrong when you have primary stacked one against the other. So there'll be a lot of concentration on working the press. There'll be a lot of concentration on the web and net-based communication in those early in those primaries, particularly early. So ones. that'll be, uh, be more concentrated on the net for sure. the primaries. No question about it, because they're stacked up very close. So because each of the states are now jockeying to see who's more important, that's very very significant. It will reduce the impact of uh, paid media in many ways because the news cycle will become critical. Therefore, the web you make the web part of the news cycle, your own news cycle. You're creating your own news cycle here, which becomes very important. Whatever, whatever the, the talents of the, of the new young people, and I have great respect for them, it's still, it's still the same game. The, st the game is still delivering your message. Uh, it's still trying to make your candidate uh, look as good as possible and deciding what is the three or four things you want to drive home about your candidate and the three or four things you want to drive against your opponent. Uh, you now have many, many more vehicles. The critical thing today is the monitoring. You basically have got to have a whole bunch of people out there every day where we used to have people in every region monitoring newspapers or monitoring local TV stations. Now you've got to have people on the blog basically all day long looking at all these things. And, uh, but fortunately, they don't cost much, and, uh, and they do it for free, and they, uh, and they feed it to you very quickly. Look, here's a dumb thing. You ready? Campaigns of old is defined by last year because what is old is very is 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 subject now to, to shorter time spans. Right. Mo one of the most important persons in an old style campaign was the person who collected the clips in the morning right. and put them together so you could see. Right. It. You don't need that person anymore. Right. It's on the web. You right. just put the you put the you put the the catalog of clips from the previous day. You can sort them through quickly and you're on to the next thing. You can pull out what you need and you're gone. The whole thing's changing. What I'm suggesting to you is something different. The, 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 the web has certainly matured and it's important in electoral political campaigns. It's going to become more important, not in this cycle, it'll be more important in this cycle, but significantly important in the next cycle. But uh, as, this cycle is the uh, coming presidential election. That's correct. Yeah. Why? Because the quarterly, simple, simple problem. The quarterly viewing, what we call cumes on television for Americans, particularly middle-aged men, are declining rapidly. Who are the most important voters? Middle-aged men and women, okay, right. and older voters. That's changing. They're more alienated. What do the young people relate to? They relate to the do they relate to the national news? Absolutely not. They right. get more information from the Daily Show. Right. It tells you something. There is another alternative media with which to communicate with them, but has not reached maturity yet, and that's the web. No question. But about but it. the other thing that I'll tell you though, as someone who's been doing this for forty years, as a decision maker, 
I have so many more resources today. I can't imagine doing a campaign the way I used to have to do it. You get off an airplane, get a beeper, race for a, race for a, a pay telephone. Uh, you had to have your film over, overnighted somewhere. Look at it on a, you know, you never had the clips. Today, on your computer, you have it all. Uh, you know, I can look in, in half an hour and make the kinds of decisions that I need to make. So it's, it's 10 times easier, even though there's 15 times more uh, decisions to make. Uh, the question is, can the electorate keep up with it? That's well, how does the consultant now. keep up with it? I don't understand. Ed dis discussed the, uh, described the old system. Okay, the new system, Ed says, well, I look at the computer and someone is collected. But how do you, with that web, how do you collect everything that's going on? How do you know what's going on? Very someone, hard. Yeah, someone filters. I someone, mean, somebody might be a fire be, no, burning someone, over there someone, and you don't know. Someone, someone filters it for you. Right. It's got to be filtered. Right. It is much more complicated media environment because there's more messages. Look, the average American used to get 20,000 advertising images on a daily basis. Some of them are here right now. You're the face of your watch, the backdrop, uh, if the, number one on that camera, number two, whatever the camera numbers are. These are advertising images. Today, the average American who's involved in using the computer and being on the net and the web may be getting 50,000 a day, 40,000 a day, 30,000. We don't even know. To be able to share through that is very, very difficult and becomes more difficult as the days go on, which is one of the reasons I think people are not paying attention to television anymore. Right. They have a whole different way of looking at it. Therefore, this, this piece of equipment, the web, is much like educational television or television was 40 years ago. It has yet to be figured out, and it can have tremendous impact if used appropriately. And in the case of Joe Lieberman, for example, when used negatively against someone, can also have an extraordinary impact. Excellent. Yeah, the reason we say Joe Lieberman is because uh, Ned Lamont supporters were on the web, and uh, the liberal bloggers were able to uh, turn, turn that election uh, around. Uh, well, uh, let's look at the Hillary campaign for a moment. Mm -hmm. Do you think she'll have, forget the image part, but do you think she'll have an advantage because she'll be better on the web just because her political cohorts are better? Who's going to have it? It looks to me like the, the web advantage is I, going to be quite important in the primary. I think she's going to be better because she is the more experienced candidate. She's been through uh, two <coughs> presidential campaigns. She watched another one, uh, Al Gore's, fail miserably. She's been to two statewide uh, races here in New York in which she basically... Uh, uh, beat back maybe token opposition, but still in, in a very tough state. She's a very experienced politician today and with a very experienced team around her, and she has tremendous ties around this country. So I think she begins almost the closest thing we have to an incumbent uh, in, this, in this environment. So well, I, I think she's got tremendous resources. Tremendous resources. But do you think those resources are better with respect to the net than, say, Obama? Obama's younger. Would he be better on the net? I don't think that's the question. The question, people, people, whether it's the net or any place else, tend to feel comfortable with people they know, even if they don't like them. Can you get to know someone on the net? You can't. Because, because that's what Hillary's... You, you really see, can't. We see, right. that's what Hillary's trying to do, I think, with that uh, softer image. Get to know me as a softer, fuzzier person. Well, and But you're saying you can't... It won't she's work. already got 98% name ID. What she's trying to do is define herself Correct. to take some of the edges exactly. off. Sure, it's it's, but it's not like all of a sudden I'm going to introduce myself. Obama could not introduce himself on the net. Uh, uh, on these candidates that are not known couldn't come out and all of a sudden do an ad on the net and have anybody pay attention. You've got it, it's, television as 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 much as we argue against it still is where going back to the Anna Nicole whether it's it's whether it's the uh, the the. Uh, uh, the cable or network television, what have you. It's what a Mark Foley yeah. in the course of one week can go from zero name IT outside of Florida to 95% yeah. name ID across you're, the you're country. You're onto something very important right. because what this is about ultimately is the computer and cable television have yeah. become your personal television. Yes. This is a very personalized kind of process. You pick and choose on cable because suddenly the world has opened up with a right. panoply of choices never heard before. Right. You pick and choose on the computer, on the web, and on the net what you want. This is a personalized experience. And like I said before, I'm interested in democracy, which is why I went into this. And I always thought guys in our business, the best of us were the clarions of democracy because we, we got people out to vote. My concern here is somewhat different. This is either going pro to protect this system by increasing participation, or it's going to help destroy the system by reducing participation or make it decline in particular quadrants, which is the danger long term. My, my instinct is that it will increase participation ultimately. Uh, Ed says it still means, it's still television that counts. What is a computer with but a screen? I was going to say, uh, what's a computer with a screen? A computer but, with a screen is television. But, I, but uh, are, are you saying with what you just finished saying that television 
on your cable system and television on the net are so personalized that they are distinguishable from what you see on old-fashioned no television? No question about it. And that's really? why cable television works. That's but why it works. But does that mean you would have a different strategy for, for mainstream media than, uh, than you would for personalized television? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because you, the other thing is, I'd be curious. Mark Penn, uh, I, I worked with him in the president's re-election campaign in 1996. I was part of the media team. We shot some very good stuff. We did some great work. Uh, Penn was part of that team. Uh, he did the best psychosocial profiling of Americans I'd ever seen. He's probably figured out, knowing Mark, who is getting what information off the web and off the net under what times mm -hmm. and what conditions. So you can, if you can figure out how to, how to time that appropriately and how to chart it appropriately, it becomes an even more effective tool. So it wouldn't work in reverse. Uh, that's to say, uh, I guess to sum up that, you'd probably have a consultant who's good at, at, at each of the three mediums, uh, regular TV, cable, and, 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 and the net, but it doesn't work in reverse apparently where you take the image of Hillary on the net and then you try to bring it back to main well, the television. Criti the, critical, the critical thing once again, before, before you get the experts on television or radio or mail or right. what have you, what is the message? What is oh, it? The message. You, what we is haven't the, talk, we haven't really? talked any substance. What, what, what is the message and what, <laughs> yeah. what is it that you want to drive right. and what is the story you want to tell? And this is about telling a story. What television does, unlike any other media, is it creates celebrity. It's why every 24 hours a day, you've got six guests an hour on all of these stupid cable shows. It's why you can get anybody you want uh, to go out in the snow or do whatever to come on your show because it creates celebrity. People want to be on television. People don't necessarily want to be on radio. They want to be on television. I saw you on television, uh, and television has created celebrity. And that's what, in the game of politics or anything else, celebrity is what's important. Does Hillary have a good message? If so, what is it? She's beginning to develop it, and right now it's going to be about, uh, let me back it up. There's a larger issue here. Democrats win generally in economic-based arguments, okay? If, and there's generally presidential campaigns since the 60s, since 68, since Nixon have been decided by about 500,000 white men who live in four states. It's very simple. That's what it's about. She's now beginning to talk about things that matter to them, and ultimately the discussion will be about the wage and income gap, and health care is part of that, and by doing that, she will undo whatever ill feelings people may have about her original health care plan. All That's right. where this is going. We've, we've, co we've come to an end. I'm going to ask you a question, you, uh, uh, yes or no. Is Hillary electable? You bet. Hank Shock. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming by. Pleasure. Will the net make Hillary electable? Uh, Hillary is electable, and the net can add to that. Ed Rollins. Thank you. Thanks for coming by. My pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for coming by. And come by next week and learn more about the digital age. For the digital age, I am James Goodale. Good night.